There's a problem on the Camino, it affects nearly everyone and for some people it can be quite devastating. To explain it I'm going to need a bathtub curve. So this is a bathtub curve and it's used in manufacturing to help people understand when they're most likely to have problems with their products. So for example if you're making um, washing machines then you might expect your washing machines to have more faults when they're when they're new because maybe there's a problem in the manufacturing process you know maybe they're made on Friday afternoon when people aren't concentrating quite as well as they should do and then but once, once these faults have been resolved at the beginning they settle down and you get a fault now and again but not too many and then when the washing machines reach the end of their uh, useful life then they become less reliable so if you've got a washing machine and it's quite old and you're getting lots of problems that means it's time to buy a new one because it's it's got to the end of its useful life so at this end you get lots of faults because the washing machines weren't properly prepared and at this end you get lots of faults on your washing machine because your washing machine is tired and worn out so can you tell where this discussion is going back to the Camino <laughs> So this is my estimate for the number of people who have problems with their feet or legs while walking the Camino. These numbers might not be 100% accurate, but the thing I want to get across is there are an awful lot of people who have problems with their feet in the first week and I think these are all avoidable. And as the days and weeks pass, people become more tired, their feet and legs get worn out. and a lot of people think well as I'm walking along the Camino maybe the first couple of weeks will be quite hard but then my legs and feet will get stronger and I have good muscles and I'll be able to zoom along at the end it's the other way around the Camino doesn't build you up it wears you down walking 800 kilometers is a big thing to do and it walking every day it really can wear you down First, let's look at the problems people have in the first week. Lots of them are to do with their boots or shoes not fitting properly, or maybe their feet not being ready for long distances. Lots of people get blisters. One man said his toenail started to come off going down to Romthus Byers on the first date because his feet were sliding inside his boots. What's frustrating is that these people could have found out they were going to have problems after two or three days of walking by doing a test walk at home before they'd set off and it's much easier to fix any problems or to rest when you're at home than when you're on the Camino. There's a theory that if your boots are quite old then you're very unlikely to get blisters. These are the boots that I used. When I set off they had a minimum of two millimeters of tread on the bottom. Now they've still got some tread left everywhere except on the hill where they're worn down and I weigh together with my rucksack a hundred kilograms. So with two millimetres of tread on my boots, I could walk 800 kilometres and they've still got some life left in them. So if you've got some old boots that you're confident in and are comfortable, it might be better to wear those rather than treating yourself to a new pair. A second group of people are, are those who try to walk too far too soon. Two people who I met who were quite experienced walkers said they'd hurt themselves in the first week by walking too far. One hurt his ankle, another one gave himself shin splints. One man told me he'd walked 40 kilometres on his first date and he'd really worn himself out and hurt his feet and it was all a bit of a disaster. The guidebook says stick to its recommended distances and stops for the first week to, until you've got a bit more used to the, all the walking and I think that's good advice. Also the guidebook says 90% of people who do the Camino do not do any preparation. Well I can believe that. long-term problems towards the end of the Camino. You see lots of people um, limping. Some people stop carrying their rucksack for a day or two and have it sent forward just so they can have a bit of a rest. You start to see people's true character. Quite often you see people limping along and really struggling and when you speak to them you know they refuse to get the bus or to get a taxi. They're determined to do it. If you really were suffering I think it'd be okay to get a taxi or to get a bus but some people you know are so determined to do it properly they limp along in pain. 
whereas at the beginning of the walk, most of the problems are superficial blisters, losing toenails. It's very painful, but it is superficial sort of damage. Whereas at this end of the Camino, things are much more structural, you know, ankles, knees, things like that. So they are, in some ways, they are more serious. I carried with me a little pedometer and I think over the course of the 800 kilometers, I did between about 1.2 and 1.3 million steps. So you have to really, you'd be quite lucky not to have any problems with your feet or legs at all doing so, walking so far. I think there are two things that you can do to try and reduce your chances of having problems towards the end of the Camino. Number one is to reduce the amount of weight you carry. Everyone knows this, everyone tries to reduce the amount that they carry in their rucksack. Far fewer people reduce the amount of weight they're carrying on themselves and going on a bit of a diet is worth doing. And you might do your um, two or three day test walk and think to yourself, well this is fine. But after you've walked a million steps or more, I think any small reduction in weight that you're carrying will have a big effect. A second thing you could do would be to take trekking poles. Lots of people I met along the Camino said that using them greatly reduced the amount of weight and strain on their feet. One man said he had terrible blisters, but he was able to walk by using his trekking poles. So if you're going to walk more than a million footsteps, anything you can do to reduce the strain and the weight on your feet and ankles and knees is definitely worth doing. Well, at the beginning, I said there was just one problem that affected nearly every pilgrim. And then I've gone along and mentioned lots of different individual ones. But I think they all have one thing in common, and that is they're due to people not appreciating how hard it is to walk 800 kilometres. You hear that it's inclusive, that young and old, fit and unfit, people in wheelchairs can do the Camino. And that is true but you need to respect those 800 kilometers and to do it over four or five weeks is hard work. So anything you can do preparation wise to give yourself a good start and anything you can do along the way to reduce the strain on your feet and legs is definitely worth doing. So thank you for watching. If you have any comments, please let me know. But apart from that, thanks very much and goodbye.